reading from Jeremiah. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark, the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn, and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 79. We will read responsibly by a whole verse. O oh God, the heathen have come into your inheritance. They have profaned your holy temple. They have made Jerusalem a heap of rubble. They have given the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the air and the flesh of your faithful ones. They have shed their blood like water on every side of Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We yeah, have become a reproach to our neighbors, and an object of scorn and derision to those around us. How long will you be angry, O Lord? Will your fury blaze like fire forever? Pour out your wrath on the heathen who have not known you, and upon the kingdoms that have not fallen. They have devoured Jacob and made his dwelling a ruin. Remember not our past sins, nor let your compassion be swift to meet us, for we have been brought very low. A reading from the letter of 1 Timothy. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God.
Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? And he replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into their eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. I'm just glad I'm not having to preach this in front of my school. <laughs> I'm a part-time religious studies chaplain, teacher at a school, St. Andrew's Episcopal School here in town. And I'm just really glad I preach and teach in middle school, seventh grade. I'm just glad I don't have to read this reading to them. <laughs> because here at least we can talk a little bit more about it and there's a little bit more life experience here to sort of understand what Jesus is really talking about in this passage. Make uh, make for yourselves dishonest wealth so that you can, you know, go at, eh. I spend a lot of my time as a teacher of, of children that age um, trying to keep them on the right track. I, I, don't, I don't like to come into them readings from the gospel where Jesus is saying, you know, make, make, make dishonest wealth for yourself. I mean, you know, it's the kind of verses that, uh, you know, you try to help kids learn the right thing to do. Don't try to push them and lead them in a wrong direction. I mean, is that what Jesus is really doing here? Is he really saying to us, you know, try to make uh, money for yourselves even dishonestly, but if you can be shrewd. Manager here, you notice what his MO is. As he goes and he says, I'm going to be fired. Well, how can I be shrewd about this? How can I keep this job I have? I don't know. Maybe some of you have been in a situation where You've had to keep a job. And you've thought about all the way, well, i got to keep this job, you know. It's important to me. It's important to my family. I'm actually sympathetic to the manager here. I, like you, probably don't like the aspect of the shrewdness and the dishonest wealth, although in the early first century and in previous times, um, there was a, a desire and a, a, real, a real compliment to someone who could come by and with trickery, as it says in the, the, the Odyssey, or, or shrewdness, as it might say in the Gospel, find for themselves a way in a situation where there is no way. I, I'm sympathetic to that. I'm sympathetic to the manager. But what I really think Jesus is getting at here is not make for yourselves money dishonestly. 
And I don't even think he's ultimately here about just simply having this value of shrewdness in your life. No, what I really think that this gospel begs of me is really two things. And I think this is where for us, this gospel can be helpful in two ways. One is to always, especially when I'm reading a gospel like this, to just sort of stay open to the fact that I'm not here in the other side. You know, Jesus is talking to his disciples, which doesn't mean us only, right? These were real people that sat with them in a community, and we don't know the story in their lives before this. We don't know what it was that made Jesus use this analogy of shrewdness and making money by means of dishonest wealth. How might that have been something that his first hearers in this gospel would have really latched on to? Jesus was all about trying to reach people for who they are. Maybe he knew in the life story of one of his disciples a time when that disciple needed to act truly. Or maybe he knew the heartbreak of a disciple who wasn't able to keep a job at a time when he or she really needed to keep it. I like, and I think one of the things about the scriptures that I like to really just pull back and say is, I don't know, but anything that Jesus says only, I don't know the story of the lives of the first hearers, right? But I have to say, I do know something about our lives, not yours, particularly around this gospel, but around our lives today, is that there are certainly plenty of ways to make dishonest wealth, and I will not be recommending them. <laughs> and there's certainly plenty of ways to be shrewd, ways that don't need to be highlighted particularly. But I do think that ultimately what Jesus is here about is saying that the most important thing, the most important thing we can do is clarify by what means do we need and by what way do we get to what it is that we really do value most in our life? And do we really value our wealth or do we really value God? And what do we put higher? Do we put our own security higher than God in our life or do we put God higher than our security? And how do we make sense of that relationship. If there's anything about this reading that I think when we walk out this door today and remember, it ought to be this, that Jesus is on the side of putting God first above our own security. God is the one in whom we can put our trust and our hope. God is the one in whom whatever we face in our jobs or in our lives and with whatever means we need to do to make things work, there is always this anchor, there is always this spirit that we can put our trust in and we can keep it in. That goes above everything, that goes below everything. There's something about this season of this particular party when it's cooling down now that I, 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 I really like to cook. Does anybody here like to cook sometimes? And I have a particular thing, I was just saying this, uh, Landon, is that, you know, particularly this year when it cools down, it gets to fall, I like to make bolognese. Anybody here like bolognese? Oh, I do. I like to make it at home. And I, I, something when it cools down, it's not cool enough yet, I'm already anticipating it cooling down for me, you know? But I like to just get out this stock I made, and I like to make the bolognese. I'm not gonna drive you through every step of that because like this sermon's got only be 12 minutes. But you know, the thing <laughs> is, is that I always have this little process that I go through and I make it. And every year I go through it and I think about previous years and I think about making it with family in previous times. And it always starts with this same thing. And I was reading this gospel, and I really think that if there's one thing that Jesus is saying, if there's sort of a recipe to the spiritual life, it's starting with one thing. It's knowing with what 
it is that you start with. And for Jesus, it's not wealth. It's God. Amen. Amen.